ITPC Padre Piper coming to you via the virtual airwaves of YouTube saying hello YouTube Pipe community. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're finding all the blessings that the Lord has in store for you. On this episode, we're going to answer mail. We're going to have a box opening. It's from the Tin Society, the February edition. And I'm going to give you my opinion on the wall. Seems like everybody's talking about it. You'll want to know Padre's thoughts on it right after this. I don't know. I don't know what that was. I have an intro now. Uh, it's a very strange intro. Hey, but it's an intro, right? Hey, let's just get down to business. Mail call. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna introduce this today and maybe uh, make this part of a regular. Jack in Ottawa writes in. He says, "Dear Padre, why are you wearing Mr. Rogers sweaters?" I don't think that's a compliment. I think that that was meant to be a little bit of a sarcastic kind of mail thing you sent in there, Jack. And let me tell you what, Jack, you can mock me. Don't you ever, don't you ever mock Mr. Rogers. You, sir, have a good day in the neighborhood. Hey, let's talk about the tins. No, let's do this. Everybody's talking about the wall. How about I give you my opinion about the wall? Now, it's big talk. Some people, I mean, it's like prominent for them right now. And I'll tell you what, I have nothing against the wall, but I will say this. I think if I had my choice in the matter, I'd much rather listen to Dark Side of the Moon. I think it's a far superior album. Uh, I think that uh, when you, especially when you listen to it with headphones, it's just it's just better. That's, that's all I'm going to say. February edition of the Tin Society. Yes, this came probably a week ago. Yes, I'm behind schedule in opening it. But yes, you're going to see it for the first time for me. Listen, I always say this when I do these openings. I, I don't own stock in the, the Tin Society. Uh, I'm not. Uh, they don't sponsor me. I, have, I don't have a dog in the race, so to speak. Now... If you're interested, I think you should try them out. And uh, there are plenty of uh, pipe-related sites and such out there who uh, do team with the Tin Society. Off the top of my head, the one that comes to mind is, and I'm not sure if they're still doing it or not, but it was uh, Country Squire Radio. And so they even had like a little deal. Like if you put in the Country Squire code, you get, I don't know, some percentage or whatever off. But I'm paying full freight, folks. Just, uh, you know, buyer beware but it's always nice to get this in the mail as i begin to open it. you see we got our little tin society man there maybe i'll use that for the uh you know the front of the video the little thumbnail what do you think anyway there he is we open the box and uh, as we always do we find a beautiful presentation on the inside with a little note card the note card is going to tell us exactly what's in it on the back side it's going to say do you want a box for free? And if so, it tells you the different various social media streams that you can share a photo opening your box. YouTube's not on there. Moving photos, I guess they don't count those. I don't know how that works. Maybe somebody from the Tin Society can chime in down in the cellar below and let us know. So underneath that card, packed in the box in this nice little tissue paper, which is wrapped and sealed with this See if I can do this without busting it up with this beautiful little sticker, a little Tin Society guy. You see that? Whoa. All right. I'm going to start dropping things. So we're just going to bust this open. I'm going to break the seal on this beautiful tissue paper. And we're going to get into this and see exactly what we have in here. And it appears as if we have one, two, three, four tobaccos to sample this month. Uh, they always throw in what we call down here in southeast Louisiana, a little bit of lanyard. That's, a, that's just a little something extra. And so this month, that little something extra, as usual, includes some Tin Society matches, some pipe cleaners. You can never have enough of these pipe cleaners. And this is the Long's Extra Absorbent Pipe Cleaners for a clean, sweet pipe made in the USA. And uh, 
it appears that they have given us a sock, a pipe sock, or, you know, I guess you could use this for any number of things. Uh, you know, you're heading out of the house and you want to throw some a lighter and or some matches and your pipe and because it's kind of roomy and some pipe clean. I don't know. It's, you know, it's a little something extra, but let's get down to business. Ooh. All right, let's see what we got in here. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. You know, I did say in my last video in the Tin Society box opening that anything that um, I have already had, I was gonna toss into a box and when I get six or eight of them together, I'd do it as a giveaway on this channel. I don't think I've had any of these. So we're not adding to, <laughs> we're not adding to the giveaway box this month, folks, because uh, do you hear that? Bells will be ringing. Okay, let's get down to business. Blend number one for the February 2019 edition of the Tin Society box opening is Danish Mixture by Davinoff. And there it is. A sweet smell. Let's see what it says about this. I'm not familiar with this blend. It says, listed as an aromatic, I could get that from the old whiffer here, uh, listed as an aromatic, but could easily fall somewhere in the tobacco flavor centric or semi aromatic category. The tobacco flavor centric or semi aromatic category. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the tin note is fairly sweet. Yeah, that's for sure. With a light honey and fermented fruit aroma, all three components the, the Virginia, the Burley, and the Cavendish are cut into thin, even ribbons, and the result is a blend or a balanced smoke that is has a bright citrusy taste with a touch of sweetness. You can see a little bit of what that looks like. There it is, that's blend number one. Blend number two, Captain Bob's Blend by Cornell and Deal. Mmm, looks a lot like the first one. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, you sh I think all of these have kind of mixed together in the box. So I'm not sure that the sniffer is uh, all that accurate today, but if I open it, mm. yeah, yeah, smells good. Uh, you know, you want somebody to tell you if they're smelling fig farts or something, you probably need to go to a different channel with somebody who's got like real ability to do these things. All right, Captain Bob's Blend by C&D, a blend of Virginias and Burleys with just a dash of Latakia and Perique and finished with a refreshing flavor. Don't be put off by the tin note. What's that about? Fig farts? I don't know. Uh, this is a <laughs> rare form. I probably should edit that, but I probably won't because I don't make very good decisions. This is a fantastic English blend with a touch of fruit and cream. This may be one of the most interesting blends you ever smoke, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'll let you know if I'm disappointed, bud. All right, number four, Sunset Breeze by Peterson. What's the deal? Maybe somebody knows. Are the Peterson blends going away? Or are they just some of them just kind of hard to get? Hmm? Don't know. Don't know. Sunset Breeze by Peterson <laughs> also looks very similar to the first two. They all kind of, well, that one looks different. All right. The first three kind of have a similar look to them. I'm going to go ahead and open this up anyway and take a sniffer. Ooh, okay. Now that, you know, I almost get a, um, what do I know? I'm getting a cherry cordial or something out of that. But let's see. Sunset Breeze by Peterson, an excellent mixture of first choice Virginia, Burley, and Black Cavendish crown with a wonderful amaretto. That's what it was. I stand corrected. An amaretto aroma. Once a bowl is lit, I find the flavor stays at the same level throughout. No fluctuations, but a nice steady taste of amaretto. A nuttiness that's made greater by the Burley's own nut-like quality. I should be a Burley. I have a little nut-like quality about me. Okay, and number four. This is the fourth tobacco in the February 2019 <laughs> Tin Society. Now this, you can see, looks different, okay? It's got a different, uh, that almost looks like a broken 
Well, I don't know. It was something. It probably got a little broken with me knocking it on. It looks like it was round, so it might have been coins. Again, not familiar. Oh, this is embarrassing. I don't even know how to pronounce this one. So bear with me. Dublane de Oro. Dublane de Oro? Dublane de Oro. Dublane de Oro. I don't know. Dublane de Oro by Savinelli. Hey, if you can pronounce it better, you make a video, okay? It says the choicest Virginia's burleys and dark fire Kenyan leaf. Well, that's a new one. Dark fire Kenyan. All right. Are enhanced with an impeccable addition of spicy perique. Then aged to perfection before being spun into enticingly beautiful zesty coins. You see different kind of cut on this one. I don't know if you can see it in the bag or not, but it's a coin. That's really cool. Okay, a delightfully vivacious and flavorful smoke. I think we should all resolve to work the word vivacious into our vocabulary more often. It burns at a reasonable pace with a meaty, very consistent flavor with no bite or dullness and leaves just a little moisture in the bowl. There you have it. I was gonna say something distasteful about leaving a little moisture in the bowl. But I'm trying to make better decisions, and so I won't say anything distasteful. Hey, yeah, Padre here. <laughs> I'm in rare form. It's a Friday when I'm recording this. I don't know when I'm going to get it up. But I'm just happy because it's a Friday. Yes. And yes, I'm in red. And yes, yesterday was Valentine's Day, but I'm sporting my Mr. Rogers cardigans for Jack in Ottawa. Thanks for watching, Jack. And thank you for watching, too. Padre Piper wishing you and yours God's peace, grace, and blessings.